All right. Thank you for joining us for the Cross for Life Light weekly update. We'll be your host today. I'm Ashley McMillan, the Director of Annual Giving with the Life Light Foundation. Hey, Ashley, thanks for having me back. And I am uh, Mark O'Donnell, and I am a Vice President over here at Camden National Bank, uh, right here in beautiful downtown Camden. Great. Thanks for joining me, Mark. So we're so excited that you guys are all tuning in today. We hope you've had a successful week one of crossing filled with lots of crossings and fundraising. We've seen so many photos of you guys all swimming, hiking, biking, running, rowing, and everything in between. Yeah, it's been really great, actually. Um, we've heard so many crossings, and I'm happy to update you on every on what everyone, uh, excuse me, collectively has been doing. Um, the individual with the most miles, Aaron Sandler, with 110 miles, so pretty impressive there, Aaron. Um, the team with the most miles is Team North Haven, with 277 total miles crossed. And then some other interesting stats: um, swimming, we've got 34 miles; paddling, we've got 15. Hiking, we're at 11, running at 17, walking 69 miles, and biking a whopping 131 miles. So some pretty big numbers this week for sure. Wow, that's awesome for sure. Um, it's very impressive what you're all doing. So we just want to kind of give you the rundown of the show. So today we're going to take the opportunity to kind of focus on fundraising and the importance of fundraising for this special event. Um, we're also going to hear from a participant, a longtime participant, who is just setting goals and crushing them for both himself and for his team. And we're going to hear how he keeps himself and his team motivated. And also, he's going to share some tips with you all of how you can do the same. Um, but to start, we're going to kick off the program with a patient story. So we're going to hear from Liam Somers. He is from Scarborough, Maine. And we're just going to hear why this event is so important and why um, your fundraising is so important. So we're just going to take a few minutes to share his story now. Hi, my name is Liam Summers. I'm from Scarborough, Maine. And on October 14th of 2017, I was riding my bike through Acadia National Park and ended up having an accident with a vehicle. Um, it ended up putting me through the back windshield of the car, which severed uh, arteries in my neck, causing me to lose blood very quickly. The first responders on the scene recognized the uh, nature of the injury and knew that I didn't have a whole lot of time to waste, so they called Life Flight. Um, Life Flight was summoned to bring me to the Eastern Maine Medical Center Trauma Surgery in Bangor, Maine, which from uh, Bar Harbor takes about an hour by ambulance, and they got me there in less than 18 minutes. Um, they were amazing when they arrived. They stabilized me, they got me loaded in, uh, made me as comfortable as possible, took amazing care of me through the whole flight and uh, got me to the hospital uh, very, very quickly. Uh, because of Life Flight, uh, because of their rapid response, because of uh, the nature of the care they gave me, I was able to get into surgery uh, and uh, made a full recovery. So uh, they're an amazing organization. They do incredible work and without them, I wouldn't be here today. So I urge you all to um, support Life Flight, learn about what they do. They are saving lives, they are changing lives, and the life that they save may be yours or someone you love. Thank you, Life Flight. Great, so we're so th thankful to be able to share stories like Liam's, and that's just a great story demonstrating resilience and just how important Life Flight is and this crossing event is for our communities across the state of Maine. So in order for us to be able to continue being there 24-7, 365, your fundraising in this event is just critical to bringing that third upgraded helicopter to Maine. So speaking of fundraising, why don't we check in to see where we're at? Yeah, thanks, Ashley. And that was just an incredible story, which I think is why, why these numbers hold so much importance. I mean, um, the total money raised so far is um, $140,306. So, I mean, a huge number there. And some of the top right. fundraisers here are really crushing it. We've got uh, in third place, Eve Martin with $5,320. We've got Wade Smith with uh, $5,700. And a pretty tight race between he and Aaron, with Aaron uh, just over at $5,900. And then from a team standpoint, um, we've got um, in third place, the St. George Helicopter Mamas and Papas, is a mouthful, for $7,961. Um, team Islesboro for $8,775. And then these guys, Team 10 with almost $25,000. Just some incredible numbers that uh, these teams are putting up for sure. 
For sure, that's very impressive. And also while these numbers are, are very impressive and are doing great things, we still have a ways to go. So you've heard us mention about our ambitious fundraising goal. So we still have the ambitious goal of 450,000. So we're still pushing there. We still need all your friends and family to get involved. We have 145 participants um, signed up this morning and we still have our goal to get to 200. So again, while you're out there, wear your gear, share your crossing, just encourage everyone to get involved like you're having fun. Um, and also while you're getting involved, you've heard us talk about the tracking website. So just be sure that you are uploading your um, tracks, so your miles across the, uh, the state or the country, and also upload your photos while you're out there doing that. And you've heard us also talk about our photo contest. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that more now. Awesome, thanks a lot, Ashley. Yeah, so today, um, creative director uh, Joel Kushke uh, returned to his home state of Maine after studying art and design at Alfred University in upstate New York. He spent the past 12 years working as a graphic designer, an environmental uh, graphic specialist, and an art director. Joel serves on the board of Maine Ad and Design, which is an organization dedicated to connecting and uplifting Maine's creative community. He is also a year-round outdoorsman and enjoys fishing Maine's coast as well as its inland waters. And I certainly share that, uh, that passion with him as well. Great. So we'll have Joel from Maine Mag hop on. Hey, Joel. Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Good Thanks afternoon. for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, Maine Magazine is so excited to be partnering with the Cross for Life Light again this year and uh, really excited to see the photos you've already uploaded and um, look forward to continuing to see your progress and uh, just being a part of this incredible event for such a good cause. So I right. think so do, you have some, do you have some winners for us this morning? We've got some winners to share for week one. So first up in the category of best team shot, we have the Groovy Loons. And we just love this team shot so much. Um, you know, a team can be um, a small team, a big team, but this really just um, sort of exemplified that team spirit. We love to see the gangs all here. We've got swimmers, we've got paddlers. Um, and we just love seeing the enthusiasm on everyone's faces. So um, great work to the Groovy Loons. Thanks so much for submitting your photo. All right, I love the balloons as well. Me too. <laughs> for our second category, we have best individual shot. And that one goes to Nancy Curtis. She just had this absolutely gorgeous shot. She was paddling on Lower Wilson Pond in the Greenville area. So just southeast, I believe, of Moosehead Lake. Um, so just really beautiful. We love this shot. It looks so peaceful um, and just this beautiful pop of yellow color against the, the blue and green of the Greenville region. So great job to Nancy Curtis. Yeah, that's great. We heard Nancy's story last week and I believe she said she was going to be paddling 100 miles. So that must be part of it. Absolutely. Uh, and then last but not least, we, in the category of iconic Maine, we have the Groovy Loons again. They just submitted so many great shots. So, um, you know, iconic Maine, we were kind of thinking at first, you know, beautiful landscapes and beautiful places, but there was something about this shot that was just so classic, nostalgic Maine. Anybody who spent a summer in Maine um, can connect with this and just, you know, um, you know, brings back a great memory. We see everybody in the water together. They're having fun as a team and we absolutely just loved it. So they are our winner this week for the iconic main shot as well. And they, I believe, are on Thompson Lake um, in both of these shots. So those are our three winners for this week and we look forward to sharing more with you and just a reminder, send us your shots, upload them. Don't feel intimidated. You do not need to be a professional photographer to participate in this. And uh, we'd love to see more land-based shots. So send us your hiking and your running and your walking and everything. And, uh, and the final week we'll be doing a best overall winners and they will be uh, featured in an upcoming issue of Maine Magazine. So keep it up, keep up the hard work and I'll check back in with you guys next week. Awesome, thank you, Joel. Thank you. Yeah, Joel, that's great. Thanks a lot for that. And congratulations to all these week's winners. And uh, we'll be in touch with you shortly uh, to talk about your prizes. And I really do look forward to seeing some submissions next week because that was uh, that was a really fun thing to check out. Thanks a lot, Joel and Maine Mag. 
Yeah, and as you mentioned, Mark, earlier, we know people are out there hiking, biking, walking. We saw the miles, we heard the miles. So we definitely encourage all those photos to get uploaded as well. So we look forward to that. Um, and also to keep with the prizes and contest themes, we're excited to introduce um, a trivia contest with you guys. So we're hoping to interact with you a little bit more about Life Light of Maine and about the crossing. So we're gonna start doing weekly contests. So today is our first trivia question. And how this, is, how this works is we are going to post this live recording to our Facebook page later on today. So Cross for Life Light Facebook page. And within that post of the video, you can answer um, the question, answer the trivia question. Or if you don't have Facebook, then you can just send us an email at events for crossforlifelight.org and we will um, pick the winner. So to win, you're just the answer closest to the correct answer, and it will be announced on our next update. But that question is, how many transports, including air and ground combined, did Life Light of Maine have in the month of June? So again, um, we'll post this, look forward to hearing your guesses, and then we'll be selecting the winner next week. Great. Well, thanks, Ashley. I mean, I know uh, I know I'm going to make a guess on the uh, on the website for sure. And uh, we're now going to segue into really excited to be able to welcome um, a special guest for the day to share some motivation and fundraising tips with you all. We'd uh, love to welcome uh, Wade Smith. Pardon me. He's a longtime participant and captain of Team Ten. And uh, according to them, they're the glue that holds one of our top teams together. So, Wade, thanks a lot for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Uh... I'm honored to be associated with such a fine organization that performs miracles like Life Light does. Great. Excellent. And Wade, if you don't mind, tell us where you're from and how many crossings uh, you've participated in, please. I was born and raised in Southern Maine. And about 13 years ago, my better half and I, uh, Eve Martin, moved up to Camden, where we will likely remain. And we've both been getting more and more involved. This happens to be my eighth crossing. That's awesome. We're very grateful for your support. Um, so I have another question for you. So it's really been, you know, a year and a half of craziness, but you and your team seem to just do such a great job. You bring your team together, you motivate them all. You guys are top team currently um, by a lot. So how do you do it? What's your special sauce and what motivates you to keep going? Well, just like all the other teams, Team 10 is comprised of a bunch of great people they want to ensure that everyone in Maine gets the critical care, transport, and service that they deserve when they need it. Um, I can't really take credit for what Team 10 is doing. All I can do is smile, participate, and applaud them. That's great. So a true team effort for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so wait, if you don't mind, um, Coming from a past marathon guy myself, um, it sounds like last year you had a pretty unique crossing where you ran a couple miles a day, a mile in the morning, and one in the evening, and I guess to add up to a full marathon, you know, what's your plan for uh, crossing this year? You hiking, paddling, swimming, you know, what you got going on now? Well, I haven't really decided um, what exactly I'm going to do. I've been really concentrating my efforts on what I consider the most important part of the event, which is fundraising. Um, I probably will do another marathon in a week because that's how long it takes me to do a marathon. <laughs> that's great. Just remember to upload your photos to the tracker so you can get in on the photo contest. Certainly. So if you had one tip, one fundraising tip to share with others, what would that be for you? I think the most important tip that we all need to know is that the best way to guarantee you do not get a donation is to not ask. Uh, perspective makes all the difference here, and we're not asking for favors. We're giving others the opportunity to make life light stronger and to help their community. That's okay. great. And and for other team captains or just anyone who wants to get their friends and family, uh, you know, with them to join in the event, how do you encourage others to uh, you know to do so and, and join you and grow the team weight? Um, with team ten usually. Uh, really used for a model, Team Islesboro. And we've been watching them and their camaraderie and their team spirit for years and their success. And we just wanted to be like them. So we make Team 10 shirts. Um, we've organized Team 10 hikes so we can get to know each other and learn from each other and build each other up. 
so that we can successfully crush our personal crossings. Um, I really think that being a team is a secret to success in this event. And the more teams that we can get doing the things the team Islesboro does, the better off the event's going to be. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah, so we hope others join your team and join other teams as well. And then is there anything else that you'd want to share either with the audience, other participants or supporters or just anything else that you feel would be useful for everyone to know? Well, I think it's important to note that no matter who you are, what crossing you're doing, how much money you've raised, you're extremely important to this event. There's not one, two, three superheroes in this event. There's 145 superheroes that are crossing. There's countless amount of superheroes that are donating. There's other people that are superheroes that are volunteering and it takes every single one of us to make this a successful community win that it is. That's great. So, I know I've heard you say, which um, really resonates is whether you give $5 or you give $500, like every donation counts, every, every supporter you have counts. So I, I love that outlook that you have. Absolutely. Great. Well, thanks, Wade. That was awesome. Those are some incredible tips. Um, so we definitely appreciate you having having you here. And as we're on the topic of fundraising, I'd like to introduce um, our executive Lifelight Foundation Executive Director, Kate O'Halloran, and she's also going to share some fundraising tips with us today. Hi, everybody, and thank you from all of us at Lifelight of Maine and all of us at the foundation. Thank you for participating and donating. And frankly, uh, Wade's a tough act to follow. I love his line, you don't get if you don't ask, and that's very, very true. We know that fundraising and inspiring philanthropy is difficult, and we're here to, we said that we would provide you some help and support, and that's what we want to do. So a few quick tips from me today, and I actually got on my bike yesterday and did 50 miles of my cross, and it's it's really wonderful to be getting out there enjoying Maine. So here's a few quick tips. Spend some time creating your personal giving page. It shows that you care and that you're committed to the event. And that's a very important signal to all of your current and prospective supporters. Use social media. It's a great way to easily spread the word. But if you do, be sure to include a link to your donation page. We call that a call for action. So include that link and make it easy for people to support you. If you don't have social media, that's fine too. You can use email, you can use flyers, you can use letters. And the other thing that I would say, as much as you can, personalize your asks. So with you know, either one-on-one -on -one asks or to small groups, try to find something in your story that's gonna resonate with the people that you're asking. Yeah. And again, that's a great way to maximize your donations and inspire people to take action and support you. The other thing that those of you might've heard from fundraisers is that it's great to ask for a specific amount. So you may say, I'm looking for five friends to donate $25 or more. I have a friend who's doing this and she's looking for people to donate based on the number of peaks that she summits. So whenever you can, try to find uh, a way to ask for a specific amount, but do it in a way that it invites people and it doesn't scare them off. And that's personal preference. The other thing is we do have some urgency. And so with fundraisers, what we're always trying to do is get people to make those donations. And so again, by reminding people that yes, you're gonna be crossing for Aug through August and they can donate through September, but try to create some urgency if you can and say, you know, I'd like to be at $500 by August 15th. So anytime you can put donation, put timeline and deadlines on your donations and can create urgency, that's a great way to motivate people who probably are already thinking that they're going to support you to actually take that next step and do it. The other really key thing, and you heard this from Wade and you'll hear this from others, is share your why. Your why, why life flight is important, why you're doing this crossing and what you're doing. And so to make it easier for you to share your why, we have actually created a tool that I'm gonna ask Brian to show us. We've created these mailers that you can, they're going out in the mail today, so you should get them at the end of the week. It's a big piece of paper. So you can actually write in why you cross, and then you can take a picture of yourself and post that or use that in your emails. We're also gonna make this available via download. So if you wanna do multiples, you can. So this is just another tip and tool that we're trying to do to help support your cross and your fundraising efforts. And don't forget, we're always here to help. So thank you, get out there, cross, enjoy. And don't be afraid, as Wade said, to inspire and ask people to join you, 
join you on this journey because it's not about favors. It's not about us. It's about bringing that third upgraded helicopter to Maine next year. So thank you and enjoy your cross. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Kate. Really appreciate it. And I will admit to my dad always said to me as a kid, uh, if you don't know Marcus, you don't ask. So I think that's a good, uh, I think that's a good uh, way of thinking for sure. And uh, also be sure to check your mailboxes this week for the sign to fill out and utilize in your fundraising efforts. We'd like to remind you one last time to upload your activities and photos to the tracking site for this week's photo contest. And uh, also don't forget to answer the uh, trivia question. Great, thanks Mark. So we hope you enjoyed the program and that you picked up a few useful tips today. Um, if you're watching this and you're not registered, it's not too late. You can certainly still register. The crossing is open until August 31st. So from now until then, you can sign up and still create your crossing and fundraise. Um, but also if you're not interested in participating, that's okay. You can still get involved. You can also make a general event donation. So each dollar that we raise gets us closer to bringing that third critical heli critical care helicopter to Maine that we talked about for next summer. So we hope you found it useful. We hope you enjoyed hearing the story like Liam's. Um, you know, there's stories from our friends and our neighbors and our family members scattered across the state just like his. And it's important that we support these and that we just make sure that we are um, still out there fundraising and crossing. So again, thank you all for joining us. Yes, Ashley, and I second that. Thanks so much for uh, everybody joining this week, and we look forward to seeing you next Monday, the 16th, at the same time. Sounds good. Have a great day.